up till now discuss uh, different types of hazards different types of processes their safety measures and some of the precautionary measures in the uh, automobile industry in a uh, steel industry in the foundry operations in the different types of operations mainly which are related to the metals now in this case we are going to discuss about a specific industry but before discussing the issues or the hazards which are present in these types of specific industry we must know the process of the specific industry right so for example this is the safety in textile industry but simultaneously you must know about the operations which are involved in the textile industry the parameters which are involved in the textile industry then and then only you can identify the different types of hazards which are present in the textile industry and then we can identify or discuss about the safety measures in the textile industry right so we will discuss these things simultaneously because uh, as a in a shorter time we can't discuss each and everything or each and every parameters like process flow sheets then from start to end etc but we will focus uh, some of the things from the safety point of view so in the textile industry composite flow chart or the textile mill flow chart is one of the main parameter so which is essential to understand the process from the uh, safety point of view and for that purpose we must know about the machineries the chemicals the parameters which is involved under the textile machineries right so for that purpose i recommend you that you should go through the uh, process flow sheet of the textile industry and the process so uh, uh, in a shorter time ginning so this is the one of the process in the textile industry the fibers and the cotton seeds are separated by gin machines in a ginning factory so normally when these factories are there so ginning means we are only separate out these fibers that is cotton fibers from the cotton seeds that is the main criteria only so this is the separation technique and separation of fibers from the cotton seeds and that is why these factories are called as ginning factory then pressing and belling so the gin cotton is compressed and pack into the bells by the cotton presses mostly hydraulic presses are used in a pressing factory and generally these ginning and pressing factories are combined and situated in a villages where cotton is collected so we know that cotton is prepared in the farm and then it is going to separate uh, the fibers and the cotton seeds in the ginning industries and after these ginning industries these fibers are going to compressed uh, with the help of hydraulic machineries and then it is going to press so all these activities are called as pressing and belling so these cotton bales are transported to a spinning mill or a composite textile mill and the cotton seeds are separately collected they are used to extract oil uh, therefrom and also for the cattle feed so these cotton seeds are having some of the oils so which can be extracted from these cotton seeds with the help of extraction phenomena or sometimes it can be used as a cattle food also so uh, in the previous case from the uh, raw cotton we have separated these fibers and cotton seeds then these fibers are compressed converted into bells and then sent to the composite text mill textile mill and these seeds are uh, can be extracted and the oil is going to extract from these seeds 
or it can be used as a cattle food so this is the basic process of this textile mill then this bell opening and sketching operation is there in the textile mill so in a blow room so there are blow rooms available in this textile mills in a blow room the bells are open by the bell openers sometimes intend in the tinting room for a quality separation and mixed with the cotton from other bells or man made fibers through a hopper beater and by a moving spike lattice beaters and a series of rolls and fibers are thoroughly mixed clean and further open by the revolving beaters and air current against a grid through which dirt is separated so we are opening this bale we are separating these things then we are mixing some of the fibers and then cleaning is there so we are removing the dirt from these fibers a cotton lap is formed and lap rolls are sent to the threading machines so here the lap is created and then rolling operation is there and then it is sent to the carding machines then carding is going to done the next step is carding so the fibers are made parallel to each other remaining hard stuffs are broken and short thin fibers and impurities are removed a silver that is flat unvested rope is formed and it is collected in the cans that is the carding operation then spinning operation so three uh, pre comb drawing framers uh, silver lap machines comber machines drawing frames and inter frames the silver is converted into inter end by drawing drafting combing and twisting process so there are many processes which are involved under the major process like spinning right then the next step is waving preparatory so in winding department yarn defect is removed and cheese and beam that is by wrapping machines are produced pun bobbins are filled to put them in shuttles and yarn signaging is carried out to burn off and the projected fibers that is called as hairs sizing starch process is carried out in the sizing machines so these are the different steps which are covered under this textile industries then the next uh, one is weaving so after the weaving preparatory process the warp threads that is beams and weft threads that is spun bobbins are fed to looms to weave clothes so depending on our requirement we are going to use this weaving operations then some activities like cleaning mending inspection and folding is also there then the next one is finishing process so here shearing cropping cloth signaging then piling mercerizing drying washing desizing then scoring then dyeing bleaching printing process are carried out in the sequence so depending on the requirement again we have to do all these types of activities especially for the colorful clothes we have to use the dyes then for the printing material we have to use the printing machines and in this way the final product may be the textile cloth so we have to go through all this process for the final products in the textile industry so from this operations we can understand there are different hazards which are present in this textile industry so the hazards may be related to the fibrosis disease that is related to the lungs directly if you are not going to use the personal protective equipment or the respiratory type of personal protective equipments or if the all machineries are not guarded or covered 100% then there are chances of suspension of these 
cotton or the fibers in the area working area and that fibers or the dust which is respirable one can be respired by that operator and then if it is deposited in the lung then it is a major issue which is related to the health some other hazards that may be the catching of loose clothes and uh, catching of hands or the body parts fingers etc in the uh, different uh, operations like rolling waving etc and there are again a chemical hazards which may be present where bleaching is there dyeing is there printing is there in sometimes we have to use the solvents for the cleaning purpose etc and these are the major chemicals where the chemicals hazards are present so depending on the requirement depending on the technology you used in the textile industry these are the different hazards and uh, these are the general hazards which are present uh, like engineering hazards and the safety or the precautionary measures are near about same which we have discussed in the previous part then the next industry or the specific industry is a agro industry or the sugar industry so we must know about the different types of processes operations or the activities which are involved under these types of industry and then only we can understand the hazards so the operations which are involved under these agro industries are shearing then singing washing bleaching cares yarn cloth dyeing printing etc so these are the uh, different operations which may be used in the textile which may be used in the agro industry which may be used in other types of industries also so some parts or some precautionary measures may be the same when we are talking about the mechanical hazards some physical hazards some cut type hazards burn type hazards chemical hazards etc etc then the common guidelines are there for the agro industry as well as for the textile industry some machinery are also involved in these both types of industries like drives belts pulleys shaft gears flappers etc so all these things should be guarded so we have to apply the different types of guard depending on the type of equipment then we should use some of the uh, biodegradable or the eco friendly products for cleaning purpose or for removing the dust or removing the oils etc then we must discuss about a sugar industry so as we know that this is a conventional industries from many years where sugar cane is going to convert into sugar from various or different types of unit operations so uh, initially you must know about what exactly the operations what exactly the chemicals involved in these types of sugar process then only you can identify the hazards so in this process sugar canes are put on the feed that is called as rolling normally here simultaneous operation is there that is weighing carrying and then rolling and then it is pushed ahead by the steel beaters and crushed in the two or three sets of heavy rollers sometimes some heavy cutters are used sometimes only the rollers are used depending on the type of process again but we have to crush these canes sugar canes and we have to prepare a juice then the initial juice contains a bag as fibers then clay is grit albumin pectin etc so these bag as fibers caused lung disease known as bagososis so these fibers if you inhale and if it is deposited in the lungs then bagososis is the notifiable disease which can be occurred then next step is the juice is then heated and the chemical agents are 
then add it to remove the impurities and to get the saccharose so sometimes we are also using the sulfur to convert these uh, types of juices or these sugars in a crystal white color so likewise there are different chemicals which can be used to remove the different impurities in this process and then after clarification the juice is concentrated in evaporators so generally the evaporators are vacuum evaporators and there is a series of evaporators depending on the quantity and capacity of your sugar industry so after the uh, heating of this juice in this evaporators the water contents are going to remove and then the thick um, thick liquor is going to convert into the uh, crystals that is called as crystallization process so various types of crystallizers can be uh, used in the crystallization process and then it is centrifuged in the centrifuge so that maximum part of uh, liquid or the solution is going to remove from that um, equipment and then the brownish granulated sugar is can be separated out and it can be filtered out so then after using the sulfur this brownish sugar is going to convert into the white sugar and then with the help of all these types of unit operations like evaporation crystallization centrifugation etc we can convert this sugar cane with the help of this operation into the sugar crystals and then depending on the uh, size we can separate out these sugar crystals with the help of vibrating screen operation right and then we can weigh these uh, sugar crystals and can pack into the a particular bag that may be a 25 kg that may be a 50 kg bag so this is a brief about a sugar cane conversion into the sugar crystals and it is called a sugar industry operations right so the safety measures include in these sugar industry operations in a specific operation for example in a cane milling operations so while rolling while milling these canes and converted into juice what are the safety precautions so in the cane handling platform with the gantry and gantry columns not more than 10 meter apart attendance platform approach staircase sling bar and grab attachment mechanical electrical controls from crane operator's cabin so these are the safety measures then fix sound guards on motor and gear drives drives of feeder tables steel structures to withstand the heavy shocks inclined tail end to feed into the main carrier right so from this uh, picture also you can have the idea that this is one of the large scale industry in the indian industries area and where the large size equipments are used then a cane carrier three strand chain and sprockets with heavy guards then hood to cover cane knives with inspection doors and head shaft and gears with guards should be provided so whenever we are using the rolling operation milling operation cutting operation etc we have to provide the different types of guards or the covering the cane carrier motors be interlocked with the cane leveler and cutter motors so that the crane carrier stops when either of these motor trips so this is another method to stop these cutters or the motors then we can app for the sensors also then cane feeding tubes from cane carrier to the crushers at angle of 50 degree from the horizontal the tube length should be more than 3.5 meter and the guards no gear motor drives of cane kicker rotating shaft mounted with more than 20 blades or the 
arms. So totally enclosure is the main requirement in the sugar industry. Then in some of the cases, we have to provide the guards in some of the cases, especially when we are dealing with the knives, we have to cover all the knife operating machineries. Then crushing mills may be of following types based on the sugar cane crushing capacity per day, that is for 2,500 tons, 12 rollers, four steam turbines, then for 3,500 tons, 18 rolls, six steam turbines. So depending on the crushing mills also, we have to use these types of rollers and their safety measures. Fixed guards on mill gearing, flexible couplings and mill rollers should be provided. The juice gutter under the mills shall be made of brass or copper line, MS plates or aluminum plates of sufficient strength. Then we have to discuss about the dock operations. So in the previous slide, we have discussed about the sugar industries and the textile industry. Now the next operation is dock operations. So dock operation means the operations which are involved on the dock. So near to ocean, near to sea and at the port whatever the loading and unloading operations are there and that operations are called as dock operations because normally when we are talking about the transportation of the large quantity materials or the heavy containers etc then we know that the ships are the better options that from the waterway we can transport these types of material a huge quantity of material with the help of ships we can travel easily from one country to another country or from one state to another state and with low cost so for unloading these containers for unloading these drums for unloading these packages or containers uh, we have to use some of the cranes we have to uh, prepare some of the platforms and then again for transporting these containers to other places again loading operation is there so loading and unloading activities to a particular platform at a particular port and for that purpose there are some facilities required and all these operations are called as dock operations so for these dock operations, there is a particular rule that is Dock Workers Safety, Health and Welfare Rules 1990. So for safety of that operations, for protecting the health of the dock workers and for providing the facilities that is called as welfare facilities, so all these things are included under these rules, right? So with reference to that rule, we are talking about the safety in dock operations in this presentation. So we must know about some of the concept or the definitions like container, dangerous goods, dock, etc. So what exactly the container uh, with reference to this dock worker is? It means an article of transport equipment of a permanent character and accordingly strong enough to be suitable for repeated use and as specified under the national or international standards so this container must specify under national or international standard conform the is standards or conform the international standard so that we can do the repetitive actions of loading and unloading of the large quantity material so that is called as container the second one is dangerous goods so dangerous goods means any cargo which due to its explosiveness, inflammability, radioactivity, toxic or corrosive properties or other similar characteristics may cause injury, adversely affect on the human systems, loss of life or property while handling, transporting, shipping or storing and which is classified as by an international or national standards. So if the goods is having the 
characteristics like radioactivity, toxic, corrosive, inflammability, etc., and which may cause an injury while handling, transporting, etc., then that wood is called as dangerous wood. Then dock, dock means any dock, wharf, quay, or shore, and shall include any warehouse or store place belonging to owners, trustee, or conservators of and situated in or in the vicinity of the dock, wharf, quay, or shore. So any railway line or siding on or used in connection with the dock, wharf, quay, or shore, but not forming a part of Indian other areas. So if it is connected with these docks or other things, then it is called as dock only, as far as this dock workers rule is concerned. So what are the hazards while handling these types of materials at cargo platforms? So the cargo platforms, except those formed by the cargo itself, shall be made of sound material, substantially and firmly constructed, adequately supported and maintaining good repair. So that platform should be uh, strong enough so that this loading and unloading operation can be easily done then cargo platform shall be of sufficient size to receive cargo and to ensure the safety of dock workers working on them if of a height exceeding 1.5 meters in addition to the requirement of above be protected on any side which is not being used for receiving or delivering cargo by substantial fencing to a height of one meter and be provided with safe means of access such as ladders or starts. Cargo platforms shall not be overloaded and portable trestles shall be so placed as to be steady. So cargo platform should have sufficient height, sufficient strength, should be provided with some ladders, access, etc. So this is related to the cargo platform then container operations and their hazards and precautionary measures prior to the use of container spreader the work supervisor foreman or any authorized person shall ensure that it is in good working order and has been tested as per the provision under regulation 47 so all the containers should be observed by the supervisor and the expert person before use. Then single or multi uh, sling shall not be used for lifting of container. The weight of the container and the spreader used shall be noted in relation to the safe working load of the lifting appliances or transport equipment used. The special lifting appliances employed in a container handling shall be operated only by the operators processing adequate knowledge and skill for the operation. So this is a skilled operations and that is why a skilled operator who is uh, having the training of these loading and unloading activities should be involved in these container operations. The lifting appliances employed in this container handling shall be operated under the guidance of signaler. So who is going to give the signals that Suppose the container operation is going on at the cargo platform and you have to ask to move down or you have to ask to move up or left or right, etc. So whatever the signals for that movement that should be known to that expert person who is going to give the idea to the driver. So that is called as signaler. So this signaler is having a important role in the container operations then when a container is being lowered or hoisted from a chassis no person shall remain in the cabin of its prime mover so no one should be there uh, to disturb him because it is a focused operation because in a moment the uh, heavy container can drop at a platform no person shall be standing on a container while it is being lifted or lowered. Another container is being lifted or 
lower adjustment to it then uh, there is requirement of lifting appliances so that may be a heavy crane that may be some other equipments etc so in the general all lifting appliances including all parts working gear thereof whether fixed or movable and any plant or gear used in anchoring or fixing such appliances shall be of good construction sound material adequate strength for the purpose for which it is used and free from patent defect then maintain in good repair and working order drums that is the requirement in the lifting appliances so every drum or pulley round which the rope of any lifting appliances is carried out shall be adequate diameter construction in relation to the rope used any rope which terminates in the winding drum of lifting appliances shall be securely attached so that the uh, accident can be avoided then the brakes every lifting appliances shall be provided with the efficient brake systems or capable of preventing fall or uh, suspended lead or act without shock and have shoes that can be easily removed for relining because if we apply uh, frequently these brakes the liners are used for this uh, braking and that is why uh, relining is one of the activity which is used in the lifting appliances for the braking systems so these are the different requirements under this lifting appliances then loose gear so heat treatment of loose gear is necessary because whatever the properties required for this uh, gear requirement all these properties can be adopted or added into this gear systems by heating treatment and that is why heat treatment is one of the important activity and which is should be done by the expert person and which should be observed by the other inspectors or the expert persons so the requirement in this type of uh, gears are rings hooks shackles swivels etc so each and every part of this gear assembly should be inspected by the inspector should be inspected by the supervisor also and then if it is required then inspector or the chief supervisor can be tested these parts or the total system so depending on the requirement you can go for the uh, testing also you can go for the heat treatment also then wire ropes is another important uh, part which is covered under this dock operations because with the help of this wire rope only we are going to tie these containers drums or whatever the packaging material which we are used for the loading and unloading purpose and these wire ropes are used for lifting the materials lifting the containers etc or for unloading the containers or the other materials and that is why these wire ropes should be inspected wire should be observed and wire rope should be tested frequently as per as our requirement if it is needed then wire rope can be replaced by the new wire rope depending on the life of that wire rope depending on the frequency of use of that wire rope something so these are the different activities different equipment instruments are used uh, with the in the dock operations and with the help of these activities with the help of these instruments and equipments we can understand the different types of hazards which are involved under this dock operations so from this um, brief description about this dock operation you can have the idea that there are chances of slip 
there are chances of trip there are chances of accident due to the overload of the overload of a container overload or the um, less life or degradation of these uh, wire ropes or degradation of these uh, chains or ropes etc and due to these things or due to these uh, accessories there may be a chances of accident uh, while loading or unloading the uh, container or the ships because uh, normally if the accident is happen there are chances of fatalities because container is having a huge weight and under this weight if a person is there then there is a chances of fatality only right so we must take care about all this operation we must take care about all these micro level inspections of these types of instruments equipments or the accessories we must go for the different types of testing as per as the i standards are concerned and then only we can avoid the accident in the dock operations thank you